Good morning. My name is Ethan Hora, and today I will be talking about the effects of internet exposure in regards to personal information. First off, I'd like to list some ways that your information can be stolen online. The most common way is when you insert your credit card number on a sketchy website, it is ripped and taken and either used for malicious intent or it is sold. Um, when you go on a website, uh, like Amazon or eBay or something like that, those are more credible websites than if you are looking for maybe like a really niche item and you find yourself on this weird foreign website that you've never been on before and you put your credit card info on there, you're, it's more than likely to be stolen and not used for what you actually think you're using it for. Next, open or non-private social media pages. By this, I'm not, I don't mean a business account or something that's like a more public. I mean your personal life account. If you have some random dudes following you from who knows where, they can be tracking down what you're doing for who knows why, but the fact is that they're still doing it. So they're getting an in on your life through that. Another way is entering in giveaways from pop-up ads. Sometimes you may be like on different websites and you'll randomly just get a pop-up ad. For example, the one I've gotten before is, congratulations, you know, you're the thousandth viewer of this website. Enter now and here you can win this or this or this. Those are never, ever, ever credible. They're, they're using just traps to entice you to put your information in. Just another way to trick you to try and get that information, either use it or sell it. Next, clicking on an unsecure link. If you have something, someone or a bot in your email spamming you with a link, it's probably wise to not click on it because who knows what it'll bring you to. If you have um, a Facebook account, Instagram, someone DMs you or private message you a link, you probably don't want to open that because they can easily um, stick an IP tracker on that link that they can go in and take your IP and find out where you live. If you are not using a VPN or anything of that nature, they can find out where you live and they can use it for whatever their intent is. Next, chatting with a random person. You never really know who is who on the internet unless you know them in real life. So if you're chatting with a random person and they say, oh, um, I see that there's something wrong with your computer or there's something wrong with this account. Give me your information and I'll go into your account and I will fix it for you. It's That is 100% not true at all. That is not how any of that works. And that person is trying to steal whatever they want from your information. Next, after I've listed the problems, I'm going to list some uh, ways that you can block that. First off is encryption. What encryption is, is it's the, um, it's the way that the computer takes your information and codes it into a way that the computer only understands. So if a human were to get that information, they would not be able to decrypt it or understand it because it is in the computer's language that it has almost created its own little language for. So you can get free softwares on Google extensions that do this. You just type in free encryption software on Google, and it's super easy to get them. Next is a firewall. This is something that you can easily also download. It's basically just another layer of protection. So say if a hacker gets into your computer, they have to break through the firewall. It's just like the wall that stops um, foreign invaders from coming in. Next is a VPN, a virtual processing network, which this what this does is it masks your Wi-Fi. For example, if someone has my IP address, since I have a VPN, my location will show up in the middle of the ocean rather than in Orlando, Florida. These are free. There, there's so many. You might even see ads on YouTube for like NordVPN and stuff like that. There, a lot of them are free and they're just super good ways that not a lot of people utilize that you should. Next is smart passwords. This one might sound dumb, but I promise you it's not. People who have passwords like their high school graduation year or um, their first name, 12300, stuff like that. Um, if you have enough time and dedication, you can probably sit down and figure out someone's password without even hacking anything if their password is really that easy. And on top of that, if let's say this hacker does get that password, which brings me to my next um, prevention, is having different passwords for every website. If you, that hacker gets that password for one website and you have that same password for everything you use, they're going to automatically have access to everything you use because they know that password. But if you have a different password for everything you use, it's just going to be one more step that they have to go in order to get the new password. Next is probably the best thing that you can do. Antivirus programs, things like AVG, antivirus, and Bitfender are things that I personally use to protect my computer. What they do 
is they block files or foreign invaders and alert you almost like a pop-up ad in the little bottom of your screen to tell you that something is not right. For example, if you go to a website and let's say you know, you're trying to download a movie or a game and you go to that website and you click the download file, what the antivirus program will do is it'll completely stop the file download and it'll kick you off the website letting you know, hey, this isn't a good website and you shouldn't be on here. This file has something in it that you do not want on your computer. Next, why is this such a big problem? Well, the internet is basically a new thing. It hasn't been around for more than 75 years. And with new things come a lot of problems. So there's still a lot of in and outs to the way the internet works and people are getting around and finding their own ways on how to do things. Next, smart people do not always have the best intent. By this, I mean that if you are a smart person and you have a computer, you can do a lot of things. And I mean a lot of things. And if that person does not have good intent, it's super easy for them to um, go and steal whatever they like. Next, it can be super easy to steal information without being caught. You can go on YouTube right now and uh, YouTube how to take someone's IP. And in a matter of seven minutes, you can figure out how to take someone's IP address with just a simple website by sending them a link and hoping they click on it. And it'll log their IP onto that website and you will have their IP. It also known, you will be able to figure out where they live and um, what websites they access, uh, what Wi-Fi provider they use, things of that nature. And if you know what you're doing, like a lot more than just a YouTube video, with that IP address, you can find out many more things. Um, a lot of people who use the internet uh, are new towards the internet, or they could be old or young. So an old person really wouldn't really know how to use the internet just as a, a little kid who's using an iPad for the first time wouldn't know how to use the internet. So if they see an ad, ooh, um, 100 free V-Bucks for Fortnite, they're gonna click on it and then they're gonna do whatever it takes to get those free V-Bucks for Fortnite because that's what they do. So next I'm gonna talk about some statistics. Cybercrime has been, been on the rise. This graph that I included is from 2015 to 2019, and it, it, um, it includes the losses of money from 2015 to 2019. 2020 is not included on this graph because data is still being accounted for. So on the graph, you can see from 2015 to 2016, there's a slight rise in the amount of money stolen. And then in 2016 to 2017, you can see that little tiny dip. But from 2017 to 2018, you can see the huge jump in the amount of money that has been stolen virtually. And then from 2018 to 2019, you can see the same jump again. So it is only fair to conclude that from 2019 to 2020, you're going to see the same jump in the amount of money stolen, which is why you should start using these things that I have listed. And what can you do when you enter your personal information on a website? Well, do some investigating first. If you're on a website that is not well known and you don't really know what it is, do some research before purchasing off that website or putting in your information for whatever reason it is. Go and find some third-party websites that talk about that website, like blogs, maybe ask a friend. Find out if it's credible. And if no one knows what that website is, if no one's heard of it, it's probably not a credible website. But if you have a couple of friends who are like, oh yeah, I've used it before, it's probably a safe website. Um, be mindful of how much you expose. If you have a public account that you're putting your personal life on that's not a business account be careful of what you post you know you don't want to be posting a selfie but also have your uh, address in the bottom corner that just doesn't make sense um, encrypt your data super easy all you need to do is download a software and your data on your computer your files everything is backed up and encrypted into a message that the computer can only understand use security softwares like I said the AVG antivirus Bitfender those antivirus programs are a necessity for anyone who has a computer and they protect you from so much. Also, Wi-Fi. Not a lot of people know this one, but when you're connected to Wi-Fi, your IP and everything is exposed onto that um, Wi-Fi network. Everything that you do travels through the router and then goes into outer space to the satellites to do what you're doing. So if you know how to hack, someone can be connected to that same Wi-Fi and they can see a list of everyone who's on that Wi-Fi, and they can see exactly what that every single person is doing. So you, you want to be wise about what you connect to, because connecting to your home Wi-Fi is probably going to be a lot more safer than if you're at McDonald's and you're doing some FBI agent stuff, 
and some dude sitting out in the parking lot and he connects with the Wi-Fi and he can see everything you're doing. Thanks for listening. Do you have any questions? I do have two questions for you. Okay. Um, all right, first up, was there evidence that you gathered that you didn't use and then why didn't you use it? Yeah, there was a couple um, websites that I had, but I feel like the information they listed just was repetitive and it didn't really have any statistics that they had a claim of what their evidence was, but they didn't really have any reasoning for that evidence. For example, this one website, I can't remember what the name was because I didn't use it, but they were, they were stating that um, when you, when you buy a VPN or purchase a VPN, if it's free or not, when you connect to it, the people at that company are using your information because they're, uh, they're hiding your information. So you're sending them your own information so they can hide it and they're taking it and they're selling it off to third party companies. They didn't really have any like statistical evidence or firsthand accounts of that happening. So I didn't choose to use that. Okay. Uh, and if you had more time, what additional research would you conduct to, to, um, for this particular issue? If I had more time, I would probably search out for some people who have gotten their information stolen, talk to them one-on-one -on -one and, see what their experience was like and then maybe i might talk to i just in general i would talk to people that have dealt with this subject instead of just using websites and getting my information from a, just a body of text i'd rather talk to a human and like gather that information that way 